Hey guys, happy midweek, happy Wednesday. I am back in Prague and had such an amazing time at the Low Carb Universe Conference in Mallorca last week. I hope that you guys got to catch some of it. I was doing a lot of live streams of people's talks and was sharing a lot of the presentations from people who were there. So if you weren't able to be with us in Mallorca, you could catch some of the live streaming videos that I did, hopefully. And um, today I want to talk all about being a former vegetarian to a meat eater. And I just think it's a really interesting topic because I was vegetarian for most of my adult life and I know that it's a big struggle for a lot of people, especially being as I am mostly carnivore now. It's almost the opposite way of how I used to be for so much of my life. And I think it's really interesting for so many different reasons. One of the main reasons, you know, people always uh, comment on my post how much I have posts about briskets and I post all the time about beef and how much I love it. And when we were at the Low Carb Universe last week, I was telling Maria and Craig Emmerich at dinner uh, on our last night, the gala dinner, which was on Saturday. And I was telling them, you know, I never really ate meat much my whole life because I grew up in China and we mostly ate actually pork and chicken there. And outside of that, when we were home, you know, my parents really wanted us to be healthy, just like most of yours did. And so we avoided red meat and fat and fatty meats and those kinds of things because we were, you know, really, really convinced and brainwashed to believe that those foods were gonna kill us all and give us all cancer. And so we never ate any red meat and we just had steak very, very rarely. You know, I think, maybe once a year or something like that, we had beef really not often. So for me as an adult, then I became vegetarian when I was 17. So, you know, I really didn't have much beef in my life at all until I started keto about five years ago. And even then, when I first started keto, I was actually still vegetarian. So doing keto i started feeling you know better and better and better and my health was like getting better and better all the time and yes i agree br brisket is excellent and it does take a long time to cook um but i do know that like we just really never had much of it growing up and then i didn't have it because it's vegetarian for so long and then i started keto and i started out just adding you know a lot of poultry and a lot of fish and I wasn't adding a ton of beef yet because I just felt weird eating red meat and pork. And my husband um, has this photo of me the first time that I tried steak. We were actually over at my best friend's house and they ate a ton of meat. And uh, she actually grew up um, in Saskatchewan on a farm. And so I would ask her all these different questions about eating meat, like, what was it like? you know, to have animals and raise them and you would like eat them later, like, is that weird? And she would answer a lot of my questions about it. And one night we were there and we knew that we were coming to Prague and I had been considering it for a really long time, you know, just going back to eating all animal products. And so Cody, Jessica's husband, grilled up all this meat and I was like, I think I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna have some steak. So. My husband was there and he actually took a video of me trying steak for, the, it felt like the first time. I mean, it had been the first time in at least 20 years. Um, and he took this video and he has a picture of me of when I tried steak for the first time. And I had such an expression of joy on my face and delight and surprise. And he took this photo and he posted it on Facebook, I think, or Instagram, and everybody thought that he had proposed to me because I was like in this rapturous like expression of surprise and delight, and it was so funny. I mean, Cody was like, I'm gonna now go in the kitchen and grow up, I'm gonna grill up bacon, I'm gonna grill up all the meat that we have because you have to try everything, and uh, it, was, it was pretty funny. That was the first night that I actually really 
tried steak kind of as an adult and uh, it's now been, you know, about five years that I've been doing keto and I am, I for a long time, you know, I still consider myself keto carnivore, but for a long time I was kind of like carnivore plus uh, and I've really been zero carb carnivore now for actually the last three weeks I went off of dark chocolate. I had 100% dark chocolate and coffee and I decided to do a test of going off all caffeine for a few weeks and it's almost been a month now since I quit the 100% dark chocolate that I was having and took doing a pause on coffee. I'm not sure uh, what I'm going to do with coffee but quitting the two together somehow made it easier to go off the dark chocolate. I'm not sure why but there's some connection there. I was asking Maria Emmerich and Craig last week what they thought about it and they were saying that you know Maria's she's been off coffee for a long time and found it helped with her PCOS but they said they had clients that who were drinking coffee that it was still perpetuating cravings for them uh, so I think there might be some connection there between the two but I'm basically 100% carnivore it's been almost a month now and that I haven't had anything other than just animal foods and I'm really, really enjoying it. I find it very simple, very easy, very just, just like I'm kind of a minimalism when it comes to my life and I find that having less things just makes my life easier, makes it less complicated, makes it more enjoyable, makes gives me more time to go and enjoy other things and you know, we were at the low carb universe after dinner, you know, I wasn't fixated on going to have a treat or chocolate or dessert. I was fixating on just connecting with people and being with people. And they say that, you know, uh, one person that I met at KetoCon, Kaven Ballister, he said, uh, sorry, Kaven, he said that the opposite of disconnection is actually connection. It's connecting with people. And after dinner, I just wanted to stay and connect and hang out with people for hours and uh, I found that on our vacation after dinner I went to go do sauna and cold plunge pool instead of just wanting to go and watch TV and and eat chocolate which is like kind of my routine before I would have a bit of chocolate while we watch TV and I found myself doing a lot more interesting things a lot more healthy things connecting with people uh, we had a dinner with some really good friends in Mallorca on the last night on Tuesday and the same thing after dinner like I just wanted to hang out and talk and connect and social connection is so powerful it's so powerful in our lives and I think that it is amazing what a difference it makes to take the time to connect with other people connect with people whenever you can uh, because you know I really dealt with a lot. I come from food addiction and I know that connecting with people and finding connection is so helpful because addiction sometimes can come from that feeling of disconnection and it's really been cool I've really been enjoying it you know you guys know I'm always experimenting I'm always trying all kinds of different things grandmother for five hello from California I'm here in Prague so you're just starting at your day and I'm ending mine it's uh, pretty dark here um, almost evening but uh, yeah, so the, the main topic of my life today was talking about going from vegetarian to eating lots of meat and kind of doing the opposite. And I kind of went on a little bit of a tangent there talking about connection and addiction. But to me, they're all connected back together. And I know that going towards carnivore and becoming more and more carnivore and zero carb has just helped me uh, as a former food addict to get over my addictions and to be free of them and really to go more towards just you know eating to live and not living to eat and that was something that plagued me most of my life I was just living to eat all the time you know uh, if you've ever had food addiction you totally understand where I'm coming from but experiencing the freedom from that is so amazing and it just makes you want to keep going at it it's so motivating and you get all these other bonuses too with it. I mean, you get so many health benefits as well from, you know, that controlling starches and not having high, a lot of carbs and starches in your diet. So, Klinsky Keto, I'm from Cali too. I just found you today. 
I can totally relate to you. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you found me and that you can relate. Um, I share a lot of content about these topics. So Nick underscore V1. Hi, Vanessa. What's your opinion on the Game Changers documentary? I'm really thinking of completely cutting my meat from a diet. Before you do that, go check out Brian Sanders. He is at food.lies on Instagram and you will see he is debunking all the lies that they put in that movie and Dr. Fit and Fabulous for one example, uh, Dr. Jamie Seaman, she redid the experiments where they were showing the blood and she ate uh, tons of meat and keto and then they spun her blood in the machine and it came out totally clear. It wasn't cloudy at all. They were just lying and make up so many things in that movie and Brian Sanders is making a movie uh, to debunk all the lies that they had in that movie and you know James Cameron the producer invested millions into the C, um, pea protein and soy protein companies and they made this movie because they want everyone to go and buy their soylent green their soy protein their pea protein and it is amazing. You have to check out Brian Sanders at Food Lies because it's food at food dot lies. All his posts are about this. And Dr. Fit and Fabulous, uh, J Dr. Jamie Seaman, she is doing another experiment where she's going to compare what they had in the movie, which was like a high fat burrito, bean burrito versus uh, the meat burrito. And it's the combination of carbohydrates and fats together that are displacing that fat oxidation, keeping triglycerides or blood lipids high in the blood. So that's really what it's all about. And there are so many lies and so much misinformation in that movie. You really should go check out his content and watch his movie at least before you make the change because um, meat is one of the most nutrient dense foods in the world. It's what we have been eating for millennia. That's why we are still alive. And all this fake food and these food products that we have in stores today are only new in the last 50, 60 years. So why would we go against what we've been doing for millennia and then you know, trade all of that ancient traditional food wisdom for eating these food-like chemical-based products that are ultra-refined, ultra-processed, ultra-addictive? It's one of the main reasons I became a food addict is because all the tobacco companies moved into the food companies when they knew that time was up for them and they applied the same model to the food companies, these hyper addictive business models to make foods hyper addictive. It's one of the reasons I was a food addict for so many years is because the foods are hyper addictive, the foods that are ultra processed and they target the youngest end user, that's children. They did the same thing with cigarettes, they had the camel cartoon and they have all these cartoons to sell sugar and candy to kids and get them addicted and get them addicted to hyper processed ultra processed foods and they completely mess with our bodies our bodies can't recognize these foods when we eat them our liver is like what is that i have no idea what that is i'm gonna keep it in the blood it's i'm not gonna metabolism metabolize it i have no idea what it is there are so many thousands of years that we have been eating meat eating real food, and now we have extremely high obesity, cancer, so many diseases, cardiovascular disease, all of this in the last 50, 60 years, the same time that we started eating all these Franken foods and food-like products, you know? So do you really think that meat is the problem? No, meat is the solution. Meat is nutrient dense. I have charts that I've posted showing the nutrient density in plants versus meats, and it's the one, First thing you learn when you study nutrition, Nutrition 101, is the bioavailability of micronutrients in animal foods is off the charts compared to plants. It's the first thing you learn in any basic nutrition class. And the biological value of the protein in animal foods compared to plant foods, you can barely, barely compare it. And so anyone who's watched Game Changers and has been affected by this movie and the lies that are in it, go check out Brian Sanders' account at food.lies. I could rant about this for a while, but he really has amazing content and he's completely debunking so many of the lies that are in that movie and Dr. Fit and Fabulous 
has some great content and posts on that too. Um, let's see, look at the, yes, humans have been eating, I am the Lex, you've been have, humans have been eating meat for hundreds of thousands of years. All health problems in the last hundred years is called whip plant products, yes. It is hyper-processed, hyper-addictive foods that are being sold to us for profit. And we have been eating meat for hundreds of thousands of years in our history and we have survived and not died off as a species, but we might now, from eating these hyper-addictive, hyper-ultra-processed foods that are really not real food at all. Meat is extremely nutrient-dense. You get all the minerals, micronutrients you need from eating meat, especially red meat and especially organ meats too. Uh, beef liver, that's why I'm always posting about my chicken liver pate because it is so, so nutrient-dense. Um, Nick V1, thank you. You should do an Insta live video on it. Sure, I think I kind of just did <laughs> with this one, but I could definitely do another one. Clinkies, keto, yes, and look at the cancer rates. I know I've lost so many family members, and I think all of us are tired of seeing our family members lose their dignity, lose their health, and lose so much of their lives before it is their time because of these addictive, hyper-addictive, ultra-processed foods, and they are not real food. There's barely any nutritious nutrients or nutritious value to them at all, and it's all about profiting. And the more that they get people to go vegan and eat plant-based and all this stuff, which I did for many, many years, and I just saw my health deteriorate completely, the more that they get people doing that, you know, the more money they make. It's not about our health. It's it's about making money for them, uh, 100%. Uh, grandmother for five big food companies just want to make a lot of money. They don't care about people at all. What they feed us, what we smoke, what we were eating. Absolutely. And, you know, like I said, the tobacco companies went into the food industry and they made these hyper-processed foods. And... When I was vegetarian, I was eating high carb, no fat, barely any protein, just carbs, and I was eating a lot of processed foods. I mean, not a ton of junk food, but a lot of processed and super refined grains. And I thought I was doing my body the best thing ever just because my plate was always full of green things. And it's amazing how, you know, Vegetables and fruits have been grouped together and they give everything this healthy halo. You could practically put a, a pizza on a plate and put, you know, some green salad next to it and it'll look like a healthy meal. Anything that has a plant associated with it is deemed to be the most healthy thing. And yet, you know, we know that so many of these plants have anti-nutrients in them and they have all these anti-nutrients that they built up because they can't run away from us just like an animal could, they can't run away from their predators, so they have all these lectins and phytates and oxalates, and they may not be the holy grail of health. Actually, it turns out it's real food. It's meat, it's eggs, it's all those animal-based proteins that have the nutrients that our bodies can bioabsorb and can recognize as real food. I'm not saying all plant foods are bad, but the high starch ones, are full of starches and starches are like little Christmas lights of, of sugars that are strung together. It's a lot of sugar in the body and the body doesn't need those sugars. Carbohydrates are not an essential macronutrient. So, you know, it is, it's not that all plants are bad, but you know, if we're looking at this, you know, movies being out there trying to convince people to go plant-based and get rid of of animal products, it's just such a joke. You know, it's such a joke because that's where all the nutrients are that we need. It is real food that our bodies can recognize. I am the Lex. Real butter takes gallons of milk to make it. Margarine costs a few cents worth of soybean oil. It's profitable to make, it is so profitable to make fake foods and especially to make foods from toxic oils, like toxic cottonseed oil they basically, it was a waste product from processing the cotton that they found a way to turn it around and market to us as something healthier than actual real food, than actual real butter, and we all fell for it. 
and uh, we all ate it. And it was it's just made of toxic oils that they can't use. And it's it's ridiculous. Like butter is actually a natural health food when it's made properly. Cows are not meant to eat corn. They were not. They were meant to eat grass. Absolutely. I am the Lex. What about fiber? We do not need fiber. We actually, meat-based products are some of the best. I have a chart that I recently posted showing the prebiotic content of foods and it's very, very high in collagen, in chicken cartilage, and mostly high in a lot of the foods that we would a lot of us utilize on a keto diet, like bone broth is actually a prebiotic food because of the collagen in it. So it is amazing. I wish I would have known about keto when my, I was much younger, it would have changed my life. It's never too late and I really believe the timing is, it's all about timing and when you're ready, you know, to find out about this stuff and learn about it and you can inspire so many people that are in your age group that are in my age group, we can all inspire people that are in our various age groups. There are like younger and younger people now that I'm seeing posts and talk about low carbon keto. And we can all be an inspiration to people around us who might think, well, you know, it's too late. Like I've already set in my ways. I've already been eating, eating this way for so long. It's too late for me to change, but you can show people it's never too late to change and be an example. Uh, yes, we all drink the Kool-Aid, but thank God we found grass-fed butter. Absolutely. Yes, the oils are really, are really a huge problem, and it's it's quite sad because I think um, a lot of people are not aware of it, and so many people these days are eating out at restaurants, and most of the restaurants are using those kinds of vegetable and seed oils that are really inflammatory in the body. Right now, I'm actually studying as a part of my biochemistry and biomedical science program, I'm studying inflammation, and it's so interesting. I think the next talks I'm gonna give are gonna be all about explaining inflammation because a lot of us use the term, and we're like, okay, there's acute inflammation, there's chronic inflammation, but we kinda all think we know what it is, but it's really interesting. There's these different stages of inflammation and how exactly it presents itself in the body is really fascinating. So I'm really enjoying learning about that right now. But yeah, guys, I wanted to specifically talk today about going from vegetarian to eating meat. And it was definitely a difficult process for me at first to make the change. I used to hear from people who said that they were vegetarian and they went back and I was like, how could you do that? I just couldn't understand it because I was so brainwashed. I was so convinced that being vegetarian and vegan was the healthiest thing that I could do for myself and for the world. And now that I understand science and the true facts behind all of this, it really has, I saw it first in myself from making those changes. I really saw and experienced those results first in my own life. But then being able to learn the science behind it and understand why is so cool and to be able to understand why all of this has been improving my health, so many uh, people's health, your health. There's actual fundamental scientific reasons for why this helps. And for me, it was very, very difficult to make the transition from being vegetarian because I was so, so brainwashed to believe that plant-based and eating just plants were the way to go. It made me feel so good about myself, like I was saving all these animals, you know, by being vegetarian. And now I understand that actually regenerative restorative agriculture has such a more positive impact on our environment because we leave the earth better than it was before we came there and we restore the soil. And I've just seen such incredible improvements in my health that I can't deny that I, I absolutely love feeling so good in my body, having really not having low iron levels, and I understand why eating animal foods and, and having those as a part of my diet has such a positive impact because all the micronutrients that are essential to our bodies are in protein and fat. They're not in the plants. And there are some in the plants, but then there's all these anti-nutrients in the plants, and it's really, really hard to actually absorb all of them from there and to get complete 
whole protein sources, whereas you can do that so easily just from eating meat and animal products. Will you please give us that website again? Yes, yeah. so if you're on Instagram, Brian Sanders, I can type it out here. He is called at food.lies. So I'll just type it here so you can see. Uh, but you have to check out his account because he is making a movie which is The Game Changers Debunked and he's exposing all the lies in this movie that is full of bad facts and he is showing with doctors who are doing their own blood tests, their own lab tests, showing that the stuff that they were just making stuff up about cloudy blood, they were just making that up, you know, and freaking people out because they want to sell all their plant-based, soy-based, fake, ultra-processed foods to you because they are so freaking profitable. It's so profitable to sell people this stuff. They are making just, it's just amazing. And then the amount of people who get sick after from eating this way is just horrendous. And seeing this plant-based agenda being pushed forward is, is so crazy. And as a vegetarian for most of my life, I, I have never cared more about animals and about the way that they are cared for during their lives and humane treatment of animals and humanely slaughtering animals. And there's so much that we have to appreciate about animals that give our lives to us as opposed to just before maybe being vegetarian or more and before being carnivore now, I kind of just went in the grocery store and I bought things in pretty little packages and I didn't really think about the impact of that of that life. And I'm so thankful anytime I get to eat an animal that I'm so thankful that I'm able to eat that beef and I'm able to, to take in those nutrients and micronutrients into my body. I'm so thankful for that animal giving its life. I'm so thankful for everyone involved in the whole process. And, you know, when I was vegetarian, my health suffered so much. You know, I felt like a 90 year old woman stuck in a 20 year old's body. Uh, I could barely get off the couch. I was constantly fatigued, having so many different health issues. And it is, it is sad to think of animal suffering, but human suffering matters too. And I cannot tell you how much better my health just continues and continues to improve by prioritizing protein and healthy fats and getting really high quality proteins. And yeah, I, I pinned his name here if you wanna follow him, um, Brian Sanders at Food Lies because he is showing in his posts so much great information about all the lies in that movie. I barely even wanna hear the name of it anymore. It's just making me so upset when I have people who understand so much of the science of keto and how important it is to get our essential fats and essential protein and essential amino acids and they're being convinced by this ridiculous movie. I don't know when it came out. I think um, I think it came out in around September uh, and last year, you know, there was that other one like what the health and it's like for two, three months, just people talking about it nonstop. And then finally, it kind of fades away. Um, but we can fight them with real facts, with real science. And we can debunk all the lies that they are sharing in that movie. And um, Brian Sanders, as I said, is the best uh, source that I've seen online for debunking the myths in there. And he is sharing constant information about it. So very, very good. All right, guys. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about... Why I love brisket so much, it's because I barely ate beef and I was vegetarian for most of my adult life. And so I love, love, love fatty brisket. It's so delicious, it's so satisfying, and I can just eat and get on with my life. I can eat to live and not live to eat. And if you've ever experienced food addiction, there is freedom on the other side of it when you give your body the right adequate nutrition when you prioritize really quality proteins and healthy fats, getting lots of bluefish, all that amazing salmon. I have tons of tuned, I have tons of canned salmon and sardines constantly 
in my cupboard and my fridge to get that nosotail nutrition, to get all of those healthy essential fats that we need in our bodies in order to thrive. And if you prioritize healthy proteins, quality proteins and healthy fats, you are gonna feel so good in your body and you can end food addiction. Like If you are in it right now, trust me, you can end it and I have been there. I was obsessed with food most of my life. I was a food addict because of these hyper addictive food-like products that are being pushed on us as actual food when they're not actual food. It is just an addiction model that has been passed on to us. Um, oh, what do I make with the canned salmon? So I take the canned uh, salmon and I'll flake it together with some mustard because I love mustard. So I use Dijon, Dijon mustard and I'll make kind of um, like a salmon salad with it. Or you can add a little bit of avocado mayo and like a teaspoon of mustard any kind yellow mustard or you know dijon mustard or grainy mustard to it and it's a delicious um salmon salad if you like that from the can uh same with mackerel same with sardines and tuna uh, actually sardines are even better than tuna um, but sometimes i'll mix tuna and sardines together and make a tuna salad with that tuna sardine salad or pate it's so so delicious Suggestions other than fish. I mean, I've been talking most of this live about beef. Um, that's probably my favorite and chicken and turkey. I love poultry. I eat a ton of it. I also get cravings for poultry and I will just, I love chicken, chicken thighs, chicken breast. I have a ton of recipes for those in all my meal plans and my cookbook, Keto Essentials. It's Keto Essentials on Amazon. Tons of chicken recipes in there. Pork recipes. I have an amazing pork green curry that's in my meal plans and in the cookbook. And so many great, there's so many, you know, whatever whatever your favorite protein is, you know, just, just eat those. You know, if you love eggs, go for the eggs. You don't have to eat fish. Um, but the top sources of our essential fatty acids really are from bluefish. But if you can't, get bluefish, if that's what your question is, you can get them from walnuts. They're one of the, there's two essential fatty acids. There's alpha linoleic acid and linoleic acid. And you can get those from also walnuts and hemp seed and hemp seed oil. And I believe you can also get it from flaxseed oil. Um, if you're not doing fish, it's one of the best sources is, uh, is walnuts. I rarely eat chicken, maybe only four times in 2019. I still love chicken, like I love a rotisserie chicken. I love all kinds of poultry. I don't discriminate all the animal meats. It's great to get variety. You never know what different, you know, essentials you can get. I get a lot of my essential nutrients from eating a lot of chicken and chicken liver and doing my turkey and chicken liver pate and doing a lot of pate. I post that recipe all the time because it's so, so nutrient dense. So it's one of the best ways to get micronutrients. Um, and I also have a chart I've posted a couple times showing all the micronutrients. In chicken liver and beef liver, compared to plant foods, it's not even comparable. I mean, barely comparable. Bluefish, uh, pear, and pine cone is the fattier fish. Um, so the salmon, the mackerel, and the fish like sardines and cod. Um, so cod liver is a really great way to get essential fats as well. And it's all the fattier uh, type of fish that have our essential fatty acids in them. So yeah, guys, this, this not podcast, this live was just all about going from vegetarian to carnivore and going off of food addiction. Oh yes, I love chicken liver and chicken hearts. I fry up chicken hearts when I make the chicken liver pate and beef heart is like a really, really good steak. It tastes like beef steak and it's very, very good as well. And they're great for eating nose to tail, getting organ meats and organ meat nutrition in there. Um, but yeah, I also ended up talking a little bit about food addiction, how much being meat-based and really prioritizing getting enough protein, getting enough healthy fats has helped me 
to be able to completely be free of food addiction and it has transformed my life going from living to eat to eating to live is such a powerful thing i've really found it now at age 30, 36 and i'm so glad i found it now like i'm going to continue to live my life this way just living my life for connection for all the other beautiful things in life that are so much more important than eating hi dr barry how are you it's so nice to see you here i hope you guys are doing awesome with your new baby i'm so glad to hear that your baby is doing awesome i heard on a podcast with eve mayer that he's that your baby is doing fantastic so i'm so thrilled for you anisha and sending you guys so much love. I hope to see you guys soon at an event because you guys are awesome. Like two of the most special, coolest people I've ever gotten to meet in this whole keto world. And the work that you're doing is so powerful and so important. So thank you. Thank you so much. We have to do a podcast soon. I'd love to do one. Uh, lots of selenium in chicken gizzards. Yes, and so important for thyroid function. Uh, that's a great point. Selenium is really important for the thyroid. I didn't know that you could get it in chicken gizzards. That is so cool. I have to try those out. I I know that you can get it from Brazil nuts, um, but I don't eat nuts. So that's really cool to know. Thank you so much for sharing that. Hi, Lilian Nunes. Well, guys, I really wanted to talk about being carnivore and going from years of being vegetarian to carnivore and how much it has improved my health, improved my life. And let's all debunk game changers because it is just trash. It's full of lies, bad facts. We don't want bad facts. We want good facts, real science. And check out Brian Sanders at Food Lies. I put it pinned here because his posts about the Game Changers movie are game changing. He is providing so much actual science and real facts about this. And, you know, it's such a shame how many people are seeing this movie, being affected by it. There are so many lies in it. And there's some great podcasts out there as well that have talked about it. I know Paul, Dr. Paul Saladino did one, I think it was with uh, Dr. Ryan Lowry. It's an excellent one as well. They debunk every single lie throughout the movie. And they present it so, so well. Pear and pine cone. My food addiction, did it, was it really just my need for nutrition? My food addiction came from the fact that tobacco companies went into the food companies and they made food, they used this addiction model to make food extremely addictive. And I fell into that trap when I was really young. I became extremely addicted to sugar and to candy. And I was eating fine at home. We were getting adequate nutrition. We were getting adequate protein. But... I fell prey to probably not maybe getting all the protein I needed as possible, but mostly it's because these foods are engineered to be addictive. It's not your fault. Like these foods are engineered to be as addictive as possible. They are engineered to put the most salt, sodium, even a lot of sodium, high, high so sodium levels can trigger opiate levels in your brain. Like they put as much sugar, as much salt, as much MSG, as much you know addictive content that they can in the foods so that you become addicted to them and you know if you taste them after being on a real food diet after a while you'll realize how disgusting they are it's the same thing with cigarettes if you've ever had a smoking addiction i smoked for years and i remember after quitting for years i once had one at a party and i was like this is the most disgusting thing i've ever tasted but we know it's disgusting but it's so addictive that after a while you actually bypass that. You actually think it tastes good and it doesn't. It's absolutely atrocious. And it's the same thing with these ultra processed foods. They have this addiction model. They make the food as addictive as possible. So it triggers all the dopamine in our brains. We become addicted to it. And it's very, very high, hard to go off of these processed foods. It's very, very difficult because after a while people become very, very unhealthy, they become very overweight, they don't wanna go outside, they don't wanna leave their homes because they're afraid of someone saying something nasty to them about how they look. People start to cocoon at home and they start being immobile because these foods have 
such a detrimental effect on our health and our bodies because they're not real food. There's like no nutrients in them. And the fact that there's no nutrients in them means that we overeat them because our poor bodies are just trying to get adequate nutrition. So I blame it mostly on the fact that these foods are engineered to be extremely addictive. And as a child, you're defenseless against that. You're defenseless against tasting this, you know, candy that stimulates and lights up your brain so much. You're completely defenseless against sugar and it is and has been proven in studies to be as, and in some cases more addictive than cocaine. It's completely a drug. And so you're giving that and allowing children to access that and they're gonna be hooked for life. You know, that's why they target the youngest possible end user. And it's only by eating real food that you can strengthen yourself to be able to go off of those foods and to conquer food addiction and bring being free of it is just so empowering and so amazing and it is it's just i can't talk about it enough i mean i talk about it a lot on the podcast because uh being free of of that addiction for me has completely transformed my life to be able to go on and grow in so many other ways and spend my time doing things like studying biochemistry instead of being obsessed with food it gives my mind so much freedom and my brain is getting some such better nutrition to be able to you know stay myelinated and replenish myelination on my neurons and to be able to you know absorb this information retain it better and have so much mental clarity instead of mental fog um fahad mom can hi they're back here in india lots of people tell me to avoid chicken as they injected with antibiotics and hormones for chicken, I definitely, you know, try to get hormone-free and antibiotic-free poultry when possible. It's not always possible, uh, but I definitely try to do that and go to local farmer's markets and get foods, especially chicken, that are antibiotic-free. We are in Prague, and it's um, a lot of the meat is antibiotic-free. Uh, they really protect it, uh, so it's organic, and it's usually free of hormones and uh, a lot of antibiotics. So... I think it's it's definitely important because you want to avoid having antibiotics and those those things can act as xenoestrogens in the body. They can act as endocrine mimetics, so they can mimic uh, our endocrine, our hormone signaling in the body, and really you know dysregulate a lot of that hormonal function in the body. So you definitely want to not avoid poultry, but just make sure that your poultry is free of antibiotics and and hormonic and hormones. Um, yes, what a blessing to have good, healthy meat. It definitely is such a blessing. And, you know, support local farmers near you if you can, because, you know, you can build relationships with them and get really high quality meat and high quality nutrition from them. And you can invest in getting a whole cow for your family for a year, you know, and you just have like a deep freeze box and put it in there and you can have access to meat like that throughout the year. If you can, if it's if it's something that you can, you know, get together. I know my cousin and my aunt, they share one every year. So between the five of them and they get one um, from a local farmer in Colorado and then they fill their deep freezes full and, you know, they can have access to that throughout the year. So it's a great way to do it. Support your local farmers and support, you know, real food. So, yeah, we covered a lot today. Going from vegetarian for most of my life to carnivore, talking about game changers, talking about food addiction and hyper addictive foods. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love being here with you and I love reading your questions and getting to interact and connect with you guys. And it really is all about connection. The opposite of disconnection is connecting with people. And it really is the most important thing is our relationships in life and, and forming deep connections with others. So I hope you guys felt some connection from me to you. I hope you're having a fantastic week. Thank you so much for being here and watching. And we'll have to do another live at some point soon. I just did a live with Ketogenic Calm as well. They interviewed me for Fast Keto being nominated as one of the top five podcasts. It is such an incredible honor. If you guys want to check out Ketogenic Calm, it's at Ketogenic Calm. Vote for your favorite podcasts, your favorite keto books, your favorite keto influencers, your favorite keto positivity. 
um, influencers, all of that. You can vote at ketogenic.com. You can vote every day. And Fast Keto was nominated as one of the top five keto podcasts. And I already feel like a winner. That is just such an incredible honor. Thank you guys so much for voting and nominating me because I it means the world to me. I do all the podcasts and all of this for you guys. So thank you so much for listening, for voting for me, for nominating me. It means the world. And if you want to check out the interview I did, I just did it with at ketogenic.com on their account and they have shared the replay of that. So wishing you guys a fantastic day. Thank you so much for the kind words and sending you all lots of love. Bye for now.